Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I feel like sewing something. And a few nights ago, uh, one of my old videos popped up, a gingham quilt. I don't know if it was an actual quilt or just the quilt top, I can't remember. I did not watch the video, but I did go to the very end for the slideshow to see the pattern for the gingham because I didn't remember exactly how to do that. I don't know how I put that one together. I do know how I'm going to put this one together. But the thing is, is when I saw that, I thought, what a cool thing to try with two inch squares. And so that's what I'm going to do. But I need to keep the project small, so I'm going to make a little pet blanket, pet quilt. I don't know if I'll use batting or not. We'll see when we get to that point. For gingham, you need generally three different colors of solids. You need a dark and a medium of the color of your choice, like dark blue, medium blue, dark red, medium red. And then your third one is a light, usually white, off-white, and like I said, usually solids. I'm going to use batik, and I have a dark, a medium, and a light, but there's not that much difference. So I don't know if it's going to really scream gingham, but we're going to find out. And I picked batik because I just felt like sewing with batik. Batik is so easy to cut. It doesn't fray. It's easy to sew. There's no right or wrong, at least on the ones that I generally have. And uh, you can finger press so easily. Now, you do not have to make this gingham if you don't want to. But I will tell you what you need for squares if you do want to do the gingham. And... Uh, I think it is supposed to be like maybe 18 inches square, but then I'm going to put a border and a backing, and I haven't even thought about that. So I don't know what I'm going to do when I get to that point. We will figure it out. For the darks, and let me show you my darks, my mediums, and my lights. And see, there's a print. Now, I don't know if I've ever seen gingham with a print, but... You know, like I said, even if it doesn't look like true gingham, it's going to be cool, I do believe. For your dark, you need 49 two-inch squares. For the medium, you need 84. And for the light, you need 36. I'm going to take you to the sewing machine. It's going to be done mostly chain piecing. And then I am going to make four patches that we will later put together. I do not know if I did that on the other uh, gingham quilt that I made. Again, you can go watch that if you want. And uh, so let's just get started. Before I head over to the machine, I forgot to mention that if you don't want to do gingham, then you can just use any squares you want and you will need 169 of them and you're going to sew 13 across by 13 down. Do that any way you want. You can make four patches, nine patches, whatever you feel like making, or you can sew rows if you feel like doing that. Totally up to you. The other thing is I will link the other gingham video in the description box and also I'll put it on the end screen and I highly suggest you watch that. You really don't need to. So here's what I'm taking to the machine. I have 49 darks. Take one off and put it aside. We'll be using that one at the end. So now I have 48. I also need 48 of the mediums, but instead of counting them off, because I have 84 here, I'm just taking both stacks. And what we're going to do is sew a medium to a dark, and we're going to chain piece that. And then when all these darks, all these 48 darks, have a medium attached, then we're done with that. And then the leftover mediums that you'll have, we will be using those in the next step. I'm ready to start. So I'm going to take a dark and a medium, and these really don't have a right side or wrong side, so I'm not going to worry about it at all. And I'm just going to sew with a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to take two more, and I'm going to just pass those through also. You don't take this one off. And I'm going to do that until all my darks have a medium attached to them. I'm 
when you are done snip your chain and you have all these little pieces and we're going to press our seam to the medium side so put your dark side down and then fold back and finger press we want to do that because we're going to do another step and we want our pieces to nest when we make our four patches so again put your darker one down and push the medium up and press dark side down medium up and press and I'm almost done and then I'll show you what we're doing next we're not ready for this guy remember we have one more dark left just don't lose it now after we did all this we should have 36 mediums left over and we started with 36 lights so now we're going to go do the same thing we're going to sew a medium to a light and we're going to do those entire little stacks and I'm not going to bother to take you to the machine for that one because it's exactly what we did here when you're done that batch you're going to snip your chain and once again we're going to press our seam to the medium side so you're going to open up your little two patch you're going to put your light color down push back the medium and finger press and just do that to all of these here is what we have so far we have a pile of 48 two patches medium and dark we have a pile of 36 two patches medium and light and we still have our lonely single square of dark let's take 12 I've already counted take 12 of the medium dark two patches and put those aside and put this little guy aside too now we should have 36 of each of these and we're going to start putting those together into four patches and the way we're going to do it is we want it to look like this we want the two mediums on the diagonal so it doesn't matter you know if you do it this way or the other way just make sure your two mediums are on the diagonal and you will notice that they nest up because we pressed the seams to the medium on both of those so you can just you know nest them up there sew on one side and do that to all of these and we are going to chain piece these when you nest them look how nice that intersection comes out of course they won't all come out like that <laughs> see I didn't quite nest it enough and that's okay I'm doing such a good job <laughs> now we have a nice stack of four patches and as you saw I had a bobbin issue I just took everything apart and re-threaded sometimes that happens and um, the other thing I did wrong is <laughs> I had taken two dark and mediums and sewed those together so I had to take that apart and then I had taken two light and mediums and sewed those together and not only did I sew them together but I sewed them with the um, the wrong sides together so the seams were now on the right side okay so yes I, I screwed up a couple times so my seam ripper was my friend and I picked those and then I put them where they belonged and now I'm done it's up to you if you want to trim these or not I have some that could use a little bit of trimming I don't worry about things like matching intersections certainly not for a cat or dog blanket so we're just gonna do the best we can with what we've got going to pull let's see 16 of these let me count 16 out I have 16 I'm not too hopeful that this is going to look like gingham but we'll wait till the end now if you sewed and you said oh no my corner is down there no we, we can turn this in any direction and um, we're not gonna be lucky and have nesting seams <laughs> because 
if you're like me, I just slapped them together. I just made sure that my um, mediums were diagonal, except for the ones where I completely screwed up. And uh, I, I just put them together and sewed on whatever side. So when I pressed them, some of them are in opposite directions. I don't know. But what you want to do is turn it until you have the dark on the top left corner. This one, too. We're going to put four of these together now. See? Dark is top left. Dark is top left. Dark is top left. Study this. All your little medium diagonals are going like this, and then the light is in the bottom right. And we are going to sew these four together to make a four patch. And we're going to make four of these. That will now be 16 patches. You do it whatever way you want. You can sew this to this, this to this, and then open them up, and then sew them together. You should have something that looks like this. Just make sure that you have your pieces all in the right direction. And, you know, when you're putting them together, make sure, because that's the whole thing with gingham. They have to be right, or it's not going to look like gingham at all. So you can see I have my little squares that all had the dark on the top left. Dark on the top left, dark on the top left. Okay, so you have these four. We're going to put those aside. Now we still have this little stack of four patches. Take one four patch. We're going to make our bottom corner and we'll get this out of the way. So again, take your four patch. You want the dark corner at the top left. And then take two of your little two patches that have the dark medium. Dark on top here, dark medium, dark to the left. And then take your last little dark single. And we're just going to put this together exactly in this direction, any way you want. I'm going to do this and this. Then I will open those up and fold that over and connect this way. And you should have something like this. Darks in the four corners, mediums between those, and the center is light. This is our nine patch. Put that aside. Now out of your stack of four patches, pull eight of them. And you have eight of the dark medium two patches left. Once again, the dark at the top left and we are going to attach one of these little bars dark at the top. So it's going to go dark, medium, dark, medium, light, medium. My card ran out. I just wanted to say you're going to put this together exactly like this, and you're going to make ten of them. Now you have ten pieces that look like this. Next step. Take two four patches and lay them out like this with the dark at the top left, dark at the top left as you're seeing it. Then take two of the six patches, dark at the top left. In this case, it's on both ends. But these are the pieces we just made. So the darks, let's just say the darks at the top, the darks at the top. And we're just going to sew this as a four patch. You'll know you're right if you have a row that starts with dark, medium, dark, medium, dark, and then medium, light, medium, light, medium, dark, medium, dark, medium, dark, medium, light, medium, light, medium. Just put these four pieces together and make four of these. Here's my four. We are getting close to being done. And if you don't want to do it this way by creating patches, you can absolutely just make rows. Mine is 13 squares across, 13 squares down, and you would want an odd number. No matter what size you're making, you want an odd number. Your first row is dark, medium, dark, medium, all the way, and ends with a dark. That's why we want an odd number. The second row would be medium, light, medium, light, all the way across, and you would end with a medium. And then you would just repeat that you know, to make a square or make it long or whatever you want. But I like patches. I don't care to make long strips because I do make very crooked strips. My Even my patches, you know, the intersections are off. Some of them are not bad. I'm kind of impressed, but some of them are pretty bad. 
So now let's create the corner. This is going to be our corner on the bottom right. Your nine patch, pull that out. I believe there's only one nine patch in this whole thing. A four patch up here, and then two of our six patches. Okay, the four patch, we have the dark top left. The uh, six patch, we have our darks at the top. Here, dark top left, the six patch, and then our nine patch, doesn't matter. It's going to be right. And we are going to put this together like this. And again, you can just look at your rows and you can see that they're alternating rows and that they're alternating the colors. And we're making only one like this. And this is a 25 patch. Five across, five down. I do want to remind you that I made a postage stamp quilt and I have a series for that. And I don't know how I put it together, but I do believe it was two inch squares. I don't, I just don't remember if I did something different than this. This is what I'm doing for this one. I will link to that down below because I want you to go see the close ups at the end at just how horrible the intersections are. I mean, there's like whole rows that just look like half of what they should be. I really can't believe that I did such an awful job, but it fit like a twin size bed. It was big and it's all little squares. I want to say two inch squares. I just don't remember exactly what I did and I, uh, I don't want to go watch that whole series to see what I did. But go watch at least the end of the final one of that series and you'll see close-ups of just how terrible of a job I did. But then you'll also see the, the, quilt, uh, the quilt top at a distance. And you'll see that it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter how awful it was made. <laughs> it still looks good in the end. So just don't stress out over it. Now we're ready to put our big pieces together. Let me set it up. I had to put you very up high so you could see this. This is going to come out good. It's a little bit bigger than I expected. All right, these are our four 16 patches. This is our 25 patch. And then these four are, let's see, five by four, 20 patches. Just so we can, you know, know what we're working with. Let's start here. Our four 16 patches that we made long time ago, dark, at the top left, dark at the top left, dark at the top left, dark at the top left on all four of these and we're just going to sew those together as one big four patch. Let me slide this down so you can see. See all four of these have a dark at the top left. We're sewing these four together like that. This is what we have. It's looking like gingham, kind of crooked gingham, but just the same, it's gingham. Now let's take these two 20 patches. Those are the ones that are five across by four down. That's the orientation for these. We're going with the landscape, not portrait. Landscape, the darks at the top left. Let's sew these two suckers together and then we're going to attach it to that. Now we have this for the top. You know what would have been really cute is to replace one of these squares with a little novelty piece, just somewhere, maybe up in a corner, maybe a little kitty, a little doggy, depending on who this goes to. That would have been sweet. So let's complete the bottom part. This is our 25 patch. No matter which way you turn that, you're going to have the dark in the top left. So that's good. These two, these are portrait. These are our 20 patches, five down, four across, and the dark at the top left on both of those. And we're just going to sew these three together, and then we will attach it to this piece. I am so incredibly happy with how this turned out. I know it's far, far from perfect, but I really love that I went with the batiks and that, uh, you know, there's that little bit of a print and it looks gingham. I'm so happy about that. I know I have crooked roads. I have like a shitload of flipped seams in the back, but that's okay. That's all going to be hidden. 
And again, as shitty of a job as I did, it looks good! If there was a quilt show with a category for the best shitty job, I'd win that fucking prize. I would. <laughs> and I'd be so proud of it. Prouder than those who, like, try to be really super careful. Would I like to be perfect? Of course. But my heart is into the just piecing, putting things together, looking at it. I, you know, I, uh, I just, I don't know. I just don't care about how it comes out because I know it's always going to be good enough. Now, I expected to make a pet blanket in this video, and I'm going to do it in the next video. So this video is complete for making this lovely piece of uh, top of a quilt for a cat or dog. And uh, the next video will be actually putting that together. I have some black with some gold highlights in it. I think I might do that for the border and then for the backing and I will add batting and I even think I might want to do some quilting. Very simple because I, you know, it's kind of big so I'd want that batting to be held together with the fabric. And I thought of stitching the ditch but my ditches are like, you know, they're, they're off a lot. <laughs> so I won't be stitching in the ditch but then I thought Oh, did you just notice how I almost just had a heart attack? I thought I thought I had something in the wrong order here. I, I stopped breathing. <laughs> All right, I'll make it. Um, I can stitch on the diagonal, right? And do that all the way. I might have fun doing that, and it might actually look good. I don't but that'll be the next video. Subscribe so you don't miss it. And uh, I know it sounded complicated, but like I said, study this. And if you want to just do rows across, you can. I promise you, you will have some crooked rows. You will absolutely have uh, intersections that don't match. And it's okay. Even doing it my way, that, you know, it wasn't perfect. I just like working that way. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more soon. Bye.